In this video, part three of a two-part series on fluorescent beauty lighting, I'm gonna show you how to make a brighter, more versatile, more professional looking setup that is also more energy efficient. Hi, I'm Joe Edelman. I know, you think I screwed up in the intro. I said this was part three of a two-part series on do-it-yourself fluorescent lighting for studio photography. That's correct. My intention was to do a two-part series on the fluorescent lighting setup that I've been using for the past 10 years, long before Kina Flows and Peter Hurley became popular. After I posted the two-part series on my lights, I got a lot of email from people asking what would happen if I used T8 bulbs instead of the T12 bulbs that I was already using. Well, I won't lie to you, I had no idea what a T8 or T12 bulb was. So I didn't really know how to answer those questions. Then I had this very talented intern named Alex. Alex found a new fluorescent fixture that holds six T8 bulbs and was much more efficient and portable than my setup. Problem is, it was too bright. Every time someone looked at it, they squinted. I had a solution for that and I realized that it was time for me to educate myself more about fluorescent tubes. So here's what I learned, and stay tuned, I'm gonna show you the very cool, quiet, versatile, and efficient lights that I was able to create with this fixture. So, the label T8 or T12 refers to the difference in the diameter of the bulb. T8 bulbs are one inch in diameter, while T12 bulbs are larger with a diameter of one and a half inches. A T8 bulb, produces around 2,600 lumens, while the T12 bulb puts out around 2,500 lumens. A T8 bulb is 32 watts, while a T12 bulb is 40 watts. So this makes the T8 bulb brighter and more energy efficient. Now, over time, fluorescent bulbs begin to lose their intensity and brightness. T8 bulbs lose only 10% of their initial brightness after 7,000 hours of use. By comparison, T12 bulbs can lose 20% or double the T8 after the same number of hours. Also, T8 bulbs are powered by an electronic ballast compared to the magnetic ballast that the T12s are traditionally powered by. This also makes them more energy efficient and completely quiet. That makes them great for video production where you need to be able to record sound. So now that we know everything we need to know about modern fluorescent tubes, what about the fixtures? 98% of this setup can be purchased at Home Depot. I've included links to the main parts in my blog and included a link to the blog article below. Just like my old setup, I built four lights. The two main units are Lithonia six light ceiling fixtures. Remember, these units hold six bulbs, so there's no need to group three fixtures together like I did in my old setup. The two rim lights are made from Lithonia two light fluorescent strip lights. The rest of my Home Depot parts list included about 30 feet of wiring and four standard plugs, some half inch cable clamp connectors, a small assortment of machine screws, nuts, and flat washers, some size zero conduit hangers. These are sometimes called standoff hangers, five feet of half inch conduit pipe, two double wheel sliding door hangers, Remember, I already have the closet track mounted in my studio from my previous setup. 16 Daylight Balance T8 bulbs and a can of satin white Rust-Oleum spray paint. Now, out of the box, the fixture has a mirror finish reflector. While this may seem like a great idea, it's designed with a 95% total reflectance rate. In other words, it makes people squint a lot. So I spray painted the reflector with the satin white spray paint. The box makes a great tray to hold the reflector while you do the painting. Be patient, follow the directions on the paint can so that you don't get runs on the reflector. After the paint dried, I reassembled the unit and drilled two holes on the top to mount a single closet glide. Notice I have it mounted on top of the ballast housing. This is the perfect balance point so that the unit hangs straight and not tilted. I used two of the holes that are already drilled into the back of the ballast housing to mount two size zero standoff hangers, one near the top, one near the bottom. Then I cut the half inch conduit pipe in half and placed a 30 inch section between the standoff hangers. 
I used a mounting collar from an old reflector holder to create a stand mount so that I had the option of hanging the fixture or mounting it on a light stand. I had these collars sitting around my studio from some old PhotoFlex reflector holders. You can find similar ones on eBay very inexpensively. So as you can see, I wind up with two six light fixtures that can hang on the closet track, be moved easily from side to side, or mounted on a heavy duty light stand. Don't use a lightweight stand as the finished fixture weighs about 10 pounds with the bulbs and mounting hardware in place. But here is the real bonus. If I add a Manfrotto super clamp to the top of the heavy duty light stand, I can mount the fixture horizontally to make a great bank light for video production. Notice I threaded some 30 pound test fishing line through some of the pre-drilled holes on the outside of the fixture. This fishing line serves as a guard to prevent the bulbs from accidentally falling out of the unit while in transit. Now the rim lights are made with Lithonia two light strip lights. Just like the main units, I mounted two size zero standoff hangers near the top and bottom. For these lightweight units, I simply tightened the top hanger so that it just fits over the top of a light stand. And the bottom hanger I left open as a way to easily clamp the bottom of the light in place so that it's stable if I want to move the unit in a hurry. For these rim light units, I used a standard cable tie to ensure that the bulbs can't fall out and also to make a simple hook that allows me to hang the unit on a wall when not in use. One last feature enhancement on all of the units was to add a 99 cents carabiner to hold the power cords in place. So now, what about the total cost? Let's start with the downside. This entire setup will cost you one and a half times the investment of the $200 T12 setup that I showed you in part one of the series. My total expenditure at Home Depot for this T8 setup was just over $350. I already had the stands and the super clamps, so they were not figured into the cost of either version. And I already had the closet track, which was part of the cost of the original setup. So I didn't need to repurchase it for the new setup. The upside is, it is still a fraction of the cost of the Kena Flow lamps. And in my opinion, the only measurable differences are that the Kena Flows are more portable, they have barn doors, ballasts that allow you to dim the bulbs, and they are brighter and maintain the color spectrum more accurately, which is not a big deal with newer cameras that handle low light and custom white balance easily. So for well under $400, you have a four light studio setup that is suitable for still and video photography. And unlike my previous setup, these units can be hung from a glide track or stand mounted in either a vertical or horizontal position. They're also more energy efficient, brighter, and they make no noise that will interfere with your sound recordings. How well do they light? All of my narrative was shot using this DIY setup. Check out my blog for some finished shots done with this rig. And I almost forgot the best part, little to no flicker. You can shoot at shutter speeds higher than 1 1 of a second with no adverse effects. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a single video. And until next time, keep on shooting. Don't be afraid to suck. You might be surprised what you learn.